What terrible product sells by the millions? Hearts brand pet flea treatments, medication. It's dangerous and has been the cause of death for many pets. Turk, it's a nerve agent that's supposed to make the pet's blood toxic to fleas. I used some on my cat once and she started freaking out, then had trouble waking normally. Her legs were twitching and kicking, clearly out of her control and tears of brown thick liquid started streaming down her face. I picked her up and frantically gave her a bath hoping to wash any of the remaining chemicals off the back of her neck before any more of that poison seeped into her skin. The one time I had my credit card stolen the only charge to it was for a monthly order of ex I guess that they thought stealing a credit card and risking arrest to order it was better than the embarrassment of just ordering himself. It wasn't hard to prove it was fraudulent due to me being a woman lol. The bank reimbursed me and not one other charge was made so I felt sorry for the guy and didn't press charges. My boyfriend was trying to lose weight desperately for a job. He made a list of everything he wanted. He wanted a girdle, to suck in his belly, eggs, and four different diet pills. The cost of just one box was well over 50 bucks, and he wanted four. I told him the diet pills will never work, and they might make him sick. Bought one box anyway. He lost a couple pounds. Water weight. In order to lose more, he starved himself and ate three eggs, once per day, or nothing at all. He would have a smoothie a few times a week which has several hundred calories. He's lost about a hundred pounds but because he's given himself anorexia. It's bad. The kids nowadays are growing up in a P2W environment. They don't even know it's pay to win. It's all they ever knew and it's getting worse as time goes on. One of my favorite games I have ever played, Total War Arena, suffers from chronic P2W. The fanboys will fight tooth and nail to say it's not pay to win. Hell the mods even ban me for talking about it too much. The game died on Steam. Then went to war gaming to become more P2W. Then died again. Now it's on its last legs in China with even more pay to win. It's an amazing game with its main problem being pay to win. So instead of recognizing that, Creative Assembly just doubles down triples down on the pay to win. And each time the game and player base suffer more and more. It's honestly the price point for me. If I have lots of hours put into a game and intend to continue to play it, I'll happily spend $5-10 on cosmetics because it's not a lot of money, I'm gonna keep playing, and it's less expensive than other forms of entertainment like going to a movie or going out for lunch. Unfortunately, the $5-$10 microtransactions have all but disappeared. It seems like everything costs $20 and up. This may come as a surprise, but cable companies make almost no money off cable subscriptions. They make hilarious margins on internet, phone. But 85% of the cable subscription fees go straight to the networks and other direct costs. When you account for paying maintenance staff, etc., cable comes out at basically no profit. That isn't to say cable companies don't make a ton of money from other stuff. They do. And it also isn't to say that cable companies aren't ripping you off. They are, but the actual cable packages aren't one of those places. Disney, Fox, WB, etc. may call that money. Source, was a product manager for a major cable company until about a year ago. Not gonna lie, I'm genuinely curious about what that candle smells like. I mean, I don't imagine it smells even remotely like veg I just want to know the angle. Does it smell like roses or something because she's conceited and thinks she has a divinely perfect snatch? Honestly, if it actually smells like apple it would be one of the funniest jokes a celebrity has ever made. Weird, to be sure, but fucking hilarious. We'll never forget 2K18, my red pilling. First crack at my player for that year. Couldn't select the hairstyle I always used, and never had to purchase until then. 
had to load up into the town center and hike as slow as a turtle eyes to a barbershop, only to find the style I wanted was gonna cost me 2000 VC, $20 at the time got main 75000, it then dawned on me, imagine spending $1 to $2 actual dollars for a virtual haircut subscription that doesn't carry over into the next game in 12 months, livid. Stuff with microbeads, seriously. How was this ever legal in the first please and why is it still legal? Edit, apparently Mito beds were mostly banned in the US, where majority of Redditors are from, in 2018, enacted 2015, but I missed that. However, this is not a strict ban as they are still allowed in non-rinse off products such as makeup or pillow stuffing and you can order large quantities of them on Amazon. So while this is a step in the right direction, it is certainly not good enough. Furthermore, they should be banned worldwide like CFCs were as their environmental impact is equally as bad. Dental field here. In 2008, when I started seeing tiny, blue remnants of a foreign material below a patient's gum line, I first asked what are they using. As I started removing this stuff in more and more patients, it was narrowed down to their toothpaste. I didn't know it was plastic at the time. Thanks Crest Pro Health with microbursts. Little did everyone know the environmental effects from a toothpaste. I stopped recommended the Crest Pro Health line just based off what I saw patient-wise. Terrible. Edit. I love Reddit. You'll got jokes that I love. The Crest Pro Health line was never my favorite as many patients also experienced cheek tissue sloughing off with that mouthwash. Detoxification Miracle Products Get all the toxins out of your body. You have already have a pancreas and liver. Edit, and kidneys. Edit 2. Thanks for the silver. Edit 3. Glad to see so many people actually are educated about their digestive systems. One of my favorite areas of study right now are the gut microbiome and its ever increasing known impact on our overall health. So far it really seems like one of the most important factors, if not the most is the quality of care you give your owl poop machine. So yeah, don't consume garbage branded as detox products that fuck your colon. Poppy mill poppies. Sorry to compare them to a product, but that's how they're treated. No one should purchase a puppy from a pet store, ever. This now extends to online brokerage websites like Greenfield and Puppy Spot. They're like Amazon, a few clicks and a puppy will be sent to your door. And these puppies are coming from the exact same place as the pet store puppies. Because of people's need for instant gratification, these facilities with hundreds to thousands of breeding animals persist. They are the best cash crop you could hope for. Never believe a store who claims they only sell puppies from responsible breeders. No, not even if the owner has visited the breeders and know they're good. By definition a responsible breeder would never send their puppies to a pet store. Even pet stores that claim to only have rescues need to be scrutinized because some mills will use a shell rescue to puppy launder. Licensed and certified breeders should be a red flag, depending on the state. A breeder only needs to be licensed if they have a large number of dogs, are selling to brokers to go to pet stores, or to people sight unseen, online, YMMV depending on the state. People sometimes justify their purchases as saving puppies from a pet store, but that is still investing in the industry and funding their operations by giving them profit. Legislation hasn't stemmed the tide. Only a loss of profit will Mac Mills move on to another hustle. So please educate yourself and anyone you know who loves dogs and might ever be tempted to purchase a puppy from a pet store or online. Either adopt from a responsible rescue, or purchase from a responsible breeder. I worked at Petland many years ago. Every single puppy there came from a mill no exceptions. Every week a dude in a van would pull up and open the back which was filled floor to ceiling with cages. He would grab the ones we were supposed to get and then go make more deliveries. The puppies would be put in quarantine in a separate room for about a week before they could go into the windowed cages for customers to see. I'm being completely honest when I say two thirds of the dogs had health problems and half of them went back to the breeder without ever leaving quarantine. Tons of little things that management didn't care about like breed standards or extra toes or behavioral issues to more severe stuff like inguinal hernias or having severe hip dysplasia at six mo old. To add to that, 
the dogs were insanely overpriced. You want a chocolate lab? $1,500. A golden retriever? $1,700. A French bulldog? $3,200. And if you fell in love with one of the dogs we were supposed to push financing options on you to sell more dogs. Second most soul-sucking job I've had. Don't buy dogs from Petland. My co-worker bought a dog online. The company put the dog on an airplane while he was too young to travel. Then called her because he was sick and asked for more money to pay his medical expenses, and she sent it to them. Then they called her again and told her the dog was attacked by another dog and they were going to send her a different dog instead. I need to ask her who this company is because they sound like disgusting horrible people. Diet Pills Weight loss boosting products, do nothing, are unregulated, cause people to actually eat even more since they think they're offsetting it with the diet pills. I've also seen studies that suggest that knowing a food is light or low fat slash sugar slash carb makes people eat more than they normally would because of the subconscious this isn't as bad for me effect. Don't eat diet food and don't take diet pills. I still drink diet pop. I've used bottled oxygen when driving up from home in Phoenix to Colorado and hiking the next day. It has helped quite a bit with the sudden altitude adjustment. On prior trips, without the oxygen, I was lethargic and headachy and took a day or two to adjust. Bottled oxygen helped smooth that transition over in a noticeable way. That said, I think the majority of people buying bottled air aren't using it this way, but instead using it for some nebulous health effects. It's not still being sold by the millions, I hope, but the hot gift of Christmas 1975 was the pet rock. It was literally a rock picked up from a beach in Mexico put in a box with air holes and a cute list of how to take care of it like it was a real pet. The guy who came up with the idea sold more than a million of them at $4 a pop, which was not bad money at all in the mid-70s. The product has been well licensed as of about a decade ago by a different company. I'm very happy they haven't found a million new customers among the new generations. I asked for a pet rock. I was almost four. My dad looked around for a day or so until he found me a cool rock, and then he told me it was now my pet. I explained to him that a real pet rock has this box and stuff for it like my friend had. My dad then explains that since we're from West Texas, we're rugged outdoorsmen. We don't make pets of tame rocks and boxes. We find and tame our own wild pet rocks. So yeah, I laid it out to all my friends the way my dad explained it to me. And because everyone thought my dad was larger than life, everyone else went and got a wild pet rock. Well, everyone except Barry, who'd accepted that, since they moved to Texas from Maryland, he was better off sticking with the tame pet rocks. Dot, 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 more domesticated. Alien were computers. They used to be genuinely top of the line gaming machines, expensive but well balanced and good bang for your buck. Then Dell bought them and ran the product line into the ground, stuffing them with way too much RAM and way too little everything else but keeping the premium price. The brand still has enough cultural momentum among teenage gamers, however, that they still sell despite the terrible price point. Any dieting fad, no matter how terrible it is, my dad's partner and her daughter are real suckers for these. I remember one where basically their meals were milkshakes, and it was a pyramid scheme where they had to refer their friends to it and shit. They spend a small fortune on each fad and move on to another one. Maybe if they just stop drinking heavy and eating at McDonald's so often they would be in better shape and wouldn't need diet fads. The more I look around the more I'm convinced quite a lot of obesity is directly mental health related, or more accurately mental health levels are reflected in waistlines. Obs not 100% as there are rarer medical issues etc. I'm fat, and I'm fat because I eat too much, shocking, I know, and I eat too much because I have mental health issues that taught me to ignore my body and its responses or in extreme cases to food medicate it into silence. My fat friends, I can tell you the mental health underlying problems they have that I think cause their weight problems. My skinnier friends, all have either good coping, 
mental health strategies or have non-food based problems. Keep in mind I'm in my 40s so there's less young metabolism hiding issues. I have a psych degree too, so I guess it's possible there's some when all you've got is a hammer. Every problem looks like a nail going on. I'm a guy and I have a pair of jeans that have the tiny pockets. I wear them, maybe, once every four months when I get so busy I've forgotten to do laundry and that's my last pair of jeans, pants. Even if it's the morning and I have to go to work, I start a new load of laundry with my other pants so I don't have to wear them two days in a row. I told my wife after the first time I wore them that I understood how she felt and that I'm sorry she is stuck with jeans with no pocket. Pugs. First off, I have no ill will towards anyone who adopted a pug. You are a lovely wonderful person for giving that little boo a good pampered life. I appreciate anybody who makes the effort to caring for a dog like family. My issue is with pug breeders. They're not a naturally evolved dog breed. They were selectively bred to have flatter faces and bigger eyes over the last few centuries. What resulted is an animal that not only couldn't survive in the wild, but an animal that cannot survive without humans' modern medical intervention. Pugs suffer from a myriad of significant health complications their entire life. They really struggle just to exist, and it's pretty sad to think millions of these animals were born into these deliberately manufactured genes because they look so cute. Again, if you own a pug, no judgment. Obviously, I'm not going to be a dick and shame people for loving their pug. Quite the opposite. I'm certain they put a ton of effort and money into giving that little love muffin the best possible life, like any member of the family, and I hugely respect them for doing so. But when that sweet angel fulfills its life and gets its wings back, I would recommend a bit of pause before the replacement pug. You could just try a different toy breed. Not only to reduce the demand for more pug breeding but just for the variety and dog owning experience. You can get a pug cross breed, which would reduce the amount of health complications they have. Or, you could do some in-depth research and become a part of a pug breeding rehabilitation initiative, which is a growing association of pug breeders trying to genetically undo the health complications that have arisen over the last couple centuries. That sounds ideal. And I hope to go that route the next time I need a new bike. But in defense of shitty department store bikes, for many people, the availability of cheap bikes is the difference between having a bike and not having one. For most of my life it has not been a safe assumption that I had $300, $400 laying around to comfortably spend at any given moment in time. Much of the time that I could have bought something that cost that much outright. It would have been very unwise. It might mean not having rent later. A $125 bike from Target, $200 would have been out of the question. On the other hand, felt like much less frivolous spending. I've had that same bike from Target for most of a decade now, and while it's absolutely nothing special, it's been perfectly adequate for my needs. I don't ride much now. But it was my primary transportation to work for several jobs. And because it's a shit bike, I never worried about being a target of bike theft, even in a city notorious for that. I have taken it to bike shops on occasion and the repairs, checkups have cost less than $100 each, which has been low enough and rare enough that I could afford them. Douching products. I'm not talking about a particular brand because they're all as bad as each other. Douching for one isn't necessary as a healthy woman's vagina is pretty much self-cleaning making such products unnecessary. Douching also puts women at risk of all sorts of things such as bacterial vaginosis, UTIs, and yeast infections. If she already happens to have one of these it can push the bacteria causing the infection further up into the fallopian tubes, uterus, and ovaries. It's a useless and dangerous product that has probably caused countless infections yet still sells by the million in developed countries because there seems to be no one saying that a product tied to so many health concerns should be banned. I personally think they should be banned due to the harm they cause. I however realize that this argument could be used to ban all sorts of the things like cigarettes, alcohol, junk food yada yada and that isn't going to happen. I do however, think that perhaps this is different because those things aren't targeting one specific group especially with the idea that a woman's vagina is automatically disgusting, foul, 
smelly etc. and needs fixing. A foul odor is a sign of an infection not a need for douching. One group, women, specifically are targeted here not society in general so perhaps that makes it different. Homeopathic medicine. People pay top dollar for a bottle of shitty chalk with maybe one molecule of the active ingredient. Looking at you Australia with your shelves and shelves of the crap. No I don't want 35x valerian root or some crap. I want shite that works. But no we can't just put that stuff on the shelf. People will steal it and make oodles of meth. Nope. We have to ask the chemist for it and hope to hell it doesn't require a prescription. I may be salty but companies that make homeopathic crap should be illegal.